All right, first the backlash and now the backing off. Indiana lawmakers now making changes to the controversial religious freedom law that has been causing so much controversy for the past week plus. Now, they say the tweaks are aimed at making sure businesses can't discriminate against gay people. If anybody needs reminding, this whole mess, it flared up this past Sunday when Governor Mike Pence couldn't even answer a basic question from George Stephanopoulos, a simple yes or no, the question, obviously, about what the law did. Yes or no, if a florist in Indiana refuses to serve a gay couple uh, at their wedding, is that legal now in Indiana? George, this is this is where this debate has gone with with misinformation and uh, frankly, it's just a question, sir. Yes so, or no? Well, well, this, there's been shameless rhetoric about my state and about this law and about its intention. He kept going, but he never answered the question. Well, two days later, all of a sudden, Mr. Pence, he reconsidered some things. He changed his tune here in a news conference. Watch the 180. I think it would be helpful. And I'd like to see on my desk before the end of this week legislation uh, that is uh, added to the Religious Freedom Restoration Act in Indiana that makes it clear that this law does not give businesses a right to deny services to anyone. Oh, by the way, Mike Pence was considered a name in 2016, possibly. Notice I said was. Okay, so now we get to the legislation and the impact of it. The battles over religious freedom laws in states like Indiana and Arkansas, and trust me, there are a whole bunch of other states as well, they're also causing a divide in the Republican Party. And the question that this begs is, how much will this impact the 2016 race as well as hurt the GOP and Dominic? We could show the states here that this impacts. is more than uh, a dozen states altogether here that, in fact, I think it's closer to uh, 15, that this impacts 20, actually. Sorry. So... It's not just this. They're trying to limit uh, access to abortion. They're trying to limit access to contraception. Uh, we can go. It's like they're trying to do everything they can to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory in this and refight the culture wars. I understand in certain red states, this is a popular position, okay? But to me, what are they doing? Every Republican in every primary debate and every New Hampshire stop and Iowa stop, they're going to be asked the same question. And they're going to have two audiences. The primary voters, red meat, you know, base conservatives, they're going to want them to say, hey, you know, you don't want to serve gays, you shouldn't have to. And then in the general, you're going to be laughed out of the country if you try and say that. Why are they doing this to themselves? Richard, you know the answer to that better than I do. The Koch brothers are not writing these checks for no reason at all. I mean, but they people, don't want this. Okay, no, 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 no. no. I'm, but I'm, I'm making a general want. point. Yeah. Well, so th th as you said, th this is a play to the base. It's a play red meat. It energizes the primary voter. So the governor, let me just sidetrack for him for one second. He was smart not to play the yes or no game because once you go down that road with us as reporters, you can't win. Okay. He should have been better prepared. The he governor shouldn't have should gone have, on the show. He, he shouldn't have, he 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 should have gone on the show, but he should have never played the yes or no game. But um, you're right. Your assessment is a thousand percent correct. It'll play to the base. But in the general election, you will be laughed out because the Democratic nominee, if it's Hillary or whoever else it may be, will go, so you don't want gays to be able to, uh, you know, go to the store or whatever well, in your, in your you state. You know how this works? Hillary was going to expect it to be issue number one about the emails this week. I must have forgot. Nobody's talking about servers in Chapel anymore, right? <laughs> Every Republican <laughs> is being asked. Um, if Frank and Joe come in and they want to get a cake and some baker doesn't want to sell it to them because they're getting married, the two guys, should they or shouldn't be able to? The Huckabees and the rest, they're going to say, oh, yeah, I'm with the baker. And now all of a sudden the cycle rinse and repeat, we keep going. And it's going to happen in state after state. I don't understand the logic of it. They chose to do this. They rewrote carefully. If you bother at home to read the legislation, it's fascinating. It's not some two-sentence thing. This was crafted, intentional. They were trying to limit rights here. And if they're going to do a 180 on this and contort themselves to some tortured logic as to how this makes sense, one position, one day, the other, somebody will explain it to me, but why are they doing it to themselves? I first want this to say that I'm, I'm very happy to see that Governor Pence evolved on this issue. Oh, yeah. It only took four <laughs> days, <laughs> and he went through an entire metamorphosis, came around, and saw things in a more reasonable way. That said, I don't know why you're making such a big deal out of this. The reality is, is that this is great for the Republican Party. I How agree with figure? Dominic. 
This is outstanding. These are the issues they want to talk about. It sounds strange maybe here from the blue state of New York, but in these red states or, or clusters of where, red, uh, where, where Republicans reside within Democratic states, this is okay. good stuff, and they're supporting Let this. Me tell this you isn't why. crazy Let to me them. tell you why I disagree with you for the second time tonight. If the Republicans thought this was so great, there wouldn't have been a capitulation. Why did we see the capitulation not only in Indiana, but in Arkansas too? In Indiana, all of a sudden, the NCAA, you got athletic directors from Connecticut, from USC, and from everywhere else going, we ain't showing up to Indianapolis. And by the way, we don't want to go there again for another Final Four if this happens. All of a sudden, you got Apple and Tim Cook going, by the way, I'm going to pull, going to poach people from Indiana to bring them over to Silicon Valley, and we're not going to do business anymore. <laughs> Magically, in Arkansas, who's the biggest employer there? Walmart. They don't approve of the law so magically. Arkansas is going to rewrite their law. They're capitulating to I business heard Chick-fil-A interest. said that they were going to expand, uh, you I'm know, sure. 10 but times. You know what? That. I'll put more money on Walmart and Apple, okay, <laughs> right. than Chick-fil-A. Let me, but let me just say, I, I, I have to say this. This is... Uh, a scenario where incumbents, people who are already in office and they're taking heat like you're describing. And flip-flop. They have to flip-flop, okay? They have a problem. But you know what it's like when you don't hold office and you're the one shooting bombs at the person who's there. You want to make the case that you are as right-wing as humanly possible but, but wait, so wait, you will win that Republican, Republican governor, primary. But the Republican He's governor an incumbent. in that He's state taking is, incoming they're fire. They're having flop sweats on this as soon as it, because they know. He was know, under pressure. He's, he's got to govern. It's a difference. He must govern But they wrote the legislation themselves. He made a mistake. He evolved. <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> I don't have a way out for him. All I can tell you is he's probably seeing it the right way now. It, it's called show me the money. The <laughs> governor, I mean, it's a simple was that they were going to push this through just like stand your ground laws in many states like florida the republican agenda and democrats do it too uh, with certain issues but they got caught this time and when the national spotlight came and all the threats of boycotts of course the governor gave in in just a little lesson at home everybody doesn't matter about the protesters with the signs what matters is when businesses start to say we're not going to do business here anymore magically in 72 hours, that's the long side, pretty much 48 hours, they drop their pants, okay? So that's what we learned at a Little Rock, and that's what we learned out of Indianapolis this week. There's our lesson of the day. Okay, now before Democrats say, oh, those silly Republicans, they're gonna have a challenge on their hands. Not as bad as what we saw in Indiana, but nonetheless, this played out in New York City today here, and I, it could be a harbinger of what Democrats are gonna have to deal with for the next year and a half. It is the battle over income inequality. You got Mayor de Blasio calling on his party to do a lot more to address it. Is this going to be a tricky one for not just Hillary Clinton, but other Democrats to navigate between now and next November?